Dear students, and uh, welcome to the new episode. In this episode, I'm going to solve this uh, exam, which is uh, organic chemistry top uh, two topic questions. In this uh, past paper or this uh, this uh, test, we have three different questions. Uh, these questions from different year, uh, actually from the same year but from uh, different uh, series and different uh, paper number. Uh, you may uh, reach these questions uh, from this info which are stated in the time table, uh, this uh, table. So uh, let's uh, start with the first uh, question. <clears> Here <throat> okay, we have in this uh, question, question eight, the root of ginger plant contains compounds with the medicinal and the flavoring properties. Three of the more important compounds are gingerol, sugar, and zingeron. So from their names, it's very clear. This one, it contains alcohol group, and this one also alcohol group, that means OH, hydroxyl group. And this one contains a ketone okay so the question a the structure of gingerol is shown here the, st the chemical structure of the gingerol it's uh, stated here and he is uh, giving uh, this extra info the ch3o this group in general, it's unreactive. That means you may neglect this group, okay, because it's an uh, unreactive group. And the name of this group, when you have CH3O, then it's bonded with carbon of the benzene group. This group, it's called ether group. Ether group. Okay, so, general reacts with acidified potassium dichromate state the type of reaction and the functional group change which occurs during this reaction so type of reaction with this reagent actually it's called oxidation oxidation reaction oxidation reaction here you will oxidize what you will oxidize only the alcohols the phenol they will not be reacted this is phenol we don't have any reaction between phenols and acidified potassium dichromate but we have reaction between acidified potassium dichromate with uh, secondary alcohol and primary alcohol here this one it's secondary here we have secondary alcohol so this uh, the functional group from OH alcohol it will be oxidized so it will be converted into carbonyl which is ketone because here it's secondary alcohol in the next question uh, the second uh, structure of sugar is shown here okay here sugar why it's, it's still OL because here we have phenol group okay uh, state the type of reaction needed to convert gingerol to uh, sugar so this is general uh, gingerol you have here OH and single bond here and here the OH has been removed and the single bond it becomes double bond so here we have a reaction which is called uh, dehydration the type state the type of reaction needed to convert this one it's called dehydration dehydration reaction 
in the dehydration reaction you need which reagents we need aluminum oxide with heat so heating the ginger ale with aluminum oxide and uh, yes heating the ginger ale with aluminum oxide you will form sugar which is uh, you will remove that means minus h2o which is called dehydration so you will have a double bond here Sugar reacts with hot concentrated acidified manganate ions to form two organic products. So let's come back to this compound. This compound, it will be reacted with hot uh, acidified potassium dichromate. So at once, the compound it will be broken into two parts from the double bond. This one, it will be carboxylic acid and here also this one it will be carboxylic acid so the first compound I can draw it here just let me okay the first compound the benzene group and you have OCH3 and here you have OH one two three here carbonyl and the other carbonyl it will be carboxylic acid the other part here you have one two three four five and the sixth one it will be carboxylic group so here these two compounds they will be produced if you will deal uh, this compound with hot acidified potassium uh, manganate let's come back to the next question here zingerol is formed from gingerol some reactions of Zingeron are shown here. You have different reagents and conditions one, two, three. And you have observation. From this observation, we will explain or we will say which, uh, from this observation, we will indicate which functional group this compound contains. So here in this one, ben uh, benzene diazonium chloride. So this one, benzene diazonium chloride, is formed. Why? Because we have OH and this OH is bonded to here. That means you have phenol. And then 2,4 uh, dinitrophenyl hydrazine is formed orange precipitate. And here we have warm with tollens reagent no change so if there is no change in a tollen that means uh, this uh, compound it contains ketone group ketone group which is so this is the uh, end of the first question here another question which is called carbon from carbon this carbon look at here from the name it's ended with O and E so it's ketone it's very clear here you have ketone is a experiment and stereoisomer of carbon occurs in caraway seeds treating either isomer with hydrogen over a nickel catalyst produce a mixture of isomers with the structural uh, formula X that means this is the result of uh, hydrogenation in the presence of nickel so here this uh, type of re the, the reaction here it's hydrogenation or reduction reaction in the question a state the type of stereoisomerism 
caravan can show here where is the caravan this is a caravan which stereo isomerism could show in the question four just think about it please here what do we have this compound could form uh, trans isomerism could form optical isomerism so for optical isomerism yes we can why because this carbon it contains with this group one and here we have the second group and this one the third group and here you have H so there is a stereoisomerism also uh, the, this one could form another isomerism cis-trans for example also could form uh, cis-trans okay why because here you have in this part here here we have cis-trans so just we need to say one of them we okay so we can say we have optical isomerism why because there is carbon is bonded to four different atoms or groups okay then in the next question in the next question just write an equation using molecular formula that means just write uh, each compound with the molecular formula that means for example C6H12 or like this one okay these are called molecular formula just show the number of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens so here how many carbons we have in the ring we have six here we have seven eight nine ten so it's C ten now there is a very simple way to calculate the hydrogen numbers okay so let's consider this compound as a, a, a alkane if it's alkane how many hydrogen we need we need H22 but you are going to decrease two hydrogens because you have ring so the hydrogen becomes 10 also you will decrease two hydrogens for each double bond you have one two three so this one it will be minus six so h 14 so your compound it becomes h 14 how it's h 14 as i told you first of all consider the compounds as saturated alkane and then you will decrease two carbons for each cycle each cycle minus two and for each double bond it's two so you have one cycle one two three double bonds so you have uh, subtract the number of hydrogens uh, which is 22 minus 8 so it becomes 14 and you have oxygen then plus hydrogen in the presence of nickel here again this number of carbons is constant so it's sorry it's still C10 here the number of hydrogens for such a it's 22 you will uh, subtract this number of hydrogens only uh, minus 2 why because you have only one ring so it will be H 20 and here O. how many hydrogen you have added six hydrogens so here you need to add three mole of hydrogen here we have in this scheme a list of reactions 
X can be synthesized from methyl benzene. So you have started from methyl benzene, okay? And this methyl benzene uh, has passed through different, uh, that means uh, how many steps? Six steps to get the X. The question about these steps. Now name the mechanism in step one. What's the name of the mechanism? Here you have added something on the uh, benzene ring, but how you have added that by an, uh, which mechanism? We call it substitution, but which substitute, uh, substitution? It's electrophilic substitution. So, what type of reaction is occurring in the following steps? Step 3, you have NO2, it's converted into NH2, so this re it's reduction. This reaction, it's reduction reaction. And step 5, diazonium salt, it becomes OH, so this one it's called, could be substitution or hydrolysis so one of them so we can say substitution or hydrolysis in the next question suggest reagents and condition for each of the following steps in step one how did you have added this group by uh, a reaction which is called uh, uh, alkylation alkylation by using halogen alkane so the halogen alkane that you have added this one to the benzene ring so this one it was Cl okay and because you have a, a uh, this one Cl that means your compound is CH3 here CH Cl CH3 in the presence of Fe Cl3 Friedel Craft reactions one of the Friedel Craft reactions it's called alkylation because you have add alkyl group in the step two in the step two you have uh, nitration so the nitration should be in the process mixture of HNO3 and H2SO4 and the temperature uh, uh, should be less than 55 Celsius okay less than 55 Celsius in the step 3 you have reduction NO2 is reduced to NH2 here you need to memorize this reagent which is 10 in the presence of HCl to form what the reducing agent which is 10 chloride okay and plus hydrogen here the equation doesn't matter it's not important the most important part with this one in the step 4 you have diazonium salt the diazonium salt you have sodium nitrite and the temperature should be uh, sometimes they are maybe 10 celsius or the best one is less than 5 celsius both of them are correct <clears throat> during step 6 hydrogen is added to the benzene ring to produce the cyclohexane ring in x the six hydrogen atoms are all added to the same side of the benzene ring same side state the reagent so here 
hydrogen in the presence of platinum and with heat you have made hydrogenation you have added all the uh, hi uh, hydrogens to the double bond of the ring benzene ring now because it's on the same side so we need to draw uh, the structure which is formed same side that means all the hydrogens should be behind the plane or out of the plane so here i have chosen I have chosen the uh, behind the, uh, the plane so all of them I will write them here and then we will complete the structure where is the structure here this is a step 6 then you have CH3 OH and this group here you have CH3 and here you have OH and here you have uh, CH CH3 CH3 so here the most important part for this equation you need to draw the hydrogens all of them in the same side all of them behind the plane or you may draw them all of them out of the plane the other groups which is CH3 OH and CH CH3 CH3 should be behind the plane okay it's up to you in the question 7 you have compounds W X Y and Z are isomers of each other with the, the molecular formula C8 H7 CLO so from this one let's if the molecular formula is C8 and let's consider this compound with uh, as a uh, saturated alkane how many hydrogens do we need to have we need to have h 16 18 but how many hydrogens you have you have seven that means you have removed how many hydrogens you have removed uh, 11 hydrogen 11 hydrogen one of them for benzene ring and in the benzene ring you have three double bonds so here you have removed eight and uh, this compound could be in my opinion there is a ring there is a ring and also there is four double bond so and we have in the ring one hydrogen has been substituted one hydrogen has been substituted so for ring you have two hydrogens minus two and minus eight for four double bonds you have that means total eight and one hydrogen has been substituted from the ring so the C8H7ClO all four isomers contain a benzene ring so here it's very clear that means you have benzene ring and with three double bonds inside the benzene ring only one of the isomers contain a chiral center the result of six tests carried out on these compounds are shown let's start with W this is very important question now at called AgNO3 white precipitate foam why it's white precipitate foam because you have this group you have this group acyl chloride acyl chloride it will be hydrolyzed in the presence of any aqueous solution at once it will be OH and this Cl is bonded with AgNO3 you have formed white precipitate so your compound in the W we have acyl chloride and this is has been confirmed with the next step the next reaction when you heated the same compound with sodium hydroxide and then dilute HNO3 HNO3 also you have formed a white precipitate so in the W compound you have acyl chloride NaOH with iodine none that means you have you have you don't have methyl ketone group and with Fehling none that means it's not aldehyde 
it's not alcohol and there is no double bond so your compound should be this one so here in the next question use the experiment result addition okay so here you have this one is called acyl chloride so it's called acyl chloride uh, in the next question we will draw these compounds so just let's uh, identify the functional groups here in the question in the compounds X you don't have this one that means you don't have acyl chloride here you don't have uh, chloride which is bonded to the alkyl group so you will not have any substitution you don't have any substitution but your chloride because it's all these compounds they are containing chloride that means this chlorine atom is bonded directly to the benzene ring directly to the benzene ring so because the chlorine which is bonded to the uh, benzene ring you cannot substitute it easily with these reagents okay these reagents they will give us positive result if you have a chlorine is bonded to the alkyl group or to the uh, acyl group that means acyl this one like uh, co uh, cl here uh, sodium hydroxide with iodine that means here you have methyl ketone you have this group ch3 this one it's called the methyl ketone so methyl ketone you have none that means it's not aldehyde no double bond no double bond okay in the compound y compound y it's white precipitate forms very slowly very slowly that means this one it's not acyl chloride okay this here the chlorine in the y it's bonded to the alkyl group okay so here you have alkyl chloride alkyl chloride white precipitate also this uh, uh, test always confirming that test number one sodium hydroxide iodine with this one it's known there is no methyl ketone and uh, here fehling solution it give us red uh, precipitate that means you have aldehyde here you have aldehyde so you have alkyl chloride and aldehyde aldehyde okay and in the in the compound yes the same compound uh, dilute acidified KMnO4 no change no change so here we don't have double bond alkyl double bond I mean alkene in the alkene groups here in the compound Z none we don't have uh, any chlorine atom is bonded to the uh, alkyl group or acyl group okay we don't have methyl ketone we don't have aldehyde we have double bond alkyl group that means alkenes alkenes so here we have in the z alkene that means c double bond c so let's draw these compounds in the first compound W should be this one because he told us it's benzene ring and with a sile group a sile group so you have six carbon seven and the eight one this one so your compound is C eight here you have how many hydrogens three four five six seven H seven and one oxygen and CL it's correct 
and the next one you have methyl ketone methyl ketone and the chlorine should be bonded to the uh, phenyl group uh, benzene group directly so this is W and X so it should be this one this one now you have eight carbons and this is Cl for example this Cl could be bonded to any carbon could be here or here or here doesn't matter so let's check the nar uh, number of carbons you have six seven eight eight carbons uh, how many hydrogens you have three four five six seven it's correct and with oxygen with Cl this is correct so this is X let's uh, check the Y Y this one should be this one X this one sorry uh, yes it's X I will draw the Y here and the ring again you have uh, alkyl halide that means this one could be and alkyl chloride you have this one could be and aldehyde also this is aldehyde sorry H so you have six carbons seven eight carbons okay hydrogens you have here five here we have hydrogen we have five six seven it's correct and this compound you can see it contains chiral carbon and he said in the question one of the compounds contains chiral carbon so here we have chiral carbon this group is different chlorine group different and the aldehyde different so here why it contains chiral carbon and the last one which is Z contains double bond so here we can draw it this is the benzene ring we have chlorine is bonded directly and you can say here CH double bond CH2 let's check the number of carbons uh, one minute this one it's still it's strong because because we have uh, still one minute you have only double bond so because you have only double bond uh, and here bromine dechlorized and forms white precipitate this is very important statement this one that means double bond and we have uh, forms white precipitate that means here you have phenol all the phenols give us white precipitate with the bromine so your compound the last one should be Cl and here should be OH and here double bond CH CH2 so this one with the bromine and gold potassium dichromate the colors uh, it will be uh, decolorized and the bromine give us white precipitate with this group OH and the chlorine because it's bonded to the phenyl group that means we don't have any white precipitate in the presence of silver nitrate okay so this is the last one X the one who has chiral center which is Y and we have identified so here you just you have a free spaces to write down these compounds draw a circle around the chiral center in one of the above structures the one here we need to draw this here okay to identify the chiral carbon which is carbon uh, bonded to the uh, four different uh, groups So here at the end of the question you will find uh, this PDF it will be attached to the video so in this video you will see all the questions and uh, the last pa uh, pages you will find all the, pa the, the mark scheme and all the explanation all the compounds are stated here 
so this uh, paper is very helpful for you to practice uh, to practice and to solve uh, organic chemistry but in this case here we have a little bit advanced organic chemistry okay so uh, thank you for watching and listening and uh, see you in the next uh, episode with the new questions uh, and maybe with a new past paper. So see you.